Hey guys, it's Mr. Bullock, and here's board problem 28. Uh, so consider n pairs of numbers, you know, like x, y pairs, uh, so n pairs of them. And suppose that the mean of the x is 4, and the standard deviation of x is 3, and the mean of the y is 2, and standard deviation of y is 5. Of the following, which could be a least, uh, which could be the least square regression line? Okay, now remember, the least square regression line always goes through the ordered pair, uh, the mean of the x's, the mean of the y's. It always goes through that. And if you recall way back in the beginning that your slope, remember your slope is y equals mx plus, uh, or bx plus a, or, but it was the b part that we had, it was your slope in m actually, when in algebra 1 this would be at m. But your slope is your correlation uh, times the standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x. Remember slope formula y sub 2 uh, minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It was change in y over change in x, and that's what standard deviation is, okay? Standard deviation of y is 5, standard deviation of x is 3, so it gets 5 thirds x, okay? And then remember, you guys, that um, your correlation, your r, is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So this slope is going to be between negative 5 thirds and positive 5 thirds. So only e satisfies that. All the other ones are outside this boundary, negative 5 thirds and positive 5 thirds, so it's choice e. Alrighty? Okay, um, uh, five two uh, dash three. So this one's on cautions about experimentation, matched pair designs, and block designs. Let's go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, section A. In a double blind experiment, neither the subject nor the people who have contact with that subject know which treatment that subject receives. This helps avoid bias. This is, for example, say you're getting uh, either an aspirin or a placebo pill. Well, as long as the doctor doesn't know what you're getting and, the, and you don't know what you're getting, then it would be a double-blind experiment. Nobody knows what you're getting, okay? The person that's given you the aspirin or the placebo or yourself, it's a double-blind experiment. Lack of realism uh, creates serious potential weakness in an experiment. It just means it, it, it's just, it, it just doesn't, it's not logical, I guess, so it's, it just doesn't fit, right? It, you'll see in just a second. Okay, a, a block or cluster is a group of experimental units or subjects, if they're humans, that are known before the experiment uh, to be similar in some way that is expected to affect the response of, uh, to the treatments. Okay, um, in block designs, the random assignment of units uh, to treatments is carried out separately with the, within each block. Okay, they can be any size. And it's just another form of control, okay? And you'll see in, uh, several examples of this in just a second, okay? Here's one. Okay, comparing cancer therapy. So this is uh, example 517 on page 302, okay? Uh, the progress of a type of cancer differs in men and women. A clinical experiment to compare three therapies for this cancer therefore treats sex as a blocking variable. So two separate randomizations are done. One is assigned for the female subjects uh, for the three treatments, because there's three treatments going on, and the other assigns the male subjects to three treatments. So the next figure outlines the design of this experiment. And note, there's no randomization involving and making up these blocks. They're just separated up into two groups, males and females. Okay, so here's the figure, what they're trying to do. Okay, it's a blocking one. Uh, and so here they are separated up into these two blocks, so men and women, and the men's get... Um, uh, they get one therapy or another therapy or another therapy, and these guys are randomly assigned, and same with the women down here, okay? And then you just compare, compare their survival rates. So the key thing is they're separated up into the males and female blocks. Okay, here's another one. Uh, soybeans, and this is example 518 on page 303. The soil type and fertility of farmland differs by location. Uh, because of this, a test of the effect of tillage, which are two types of soil, and pesticide applications, three application schedules on soybeans yields uh, use uh, yields uses uh, small uses small fields as blocks. Sorry, uh, each block is divided into six plots, and then the treatments are randomly assigned to plots separated within each block. So I don't have a chart for this, you guys. So, but your blocks would be you have two types of soil, type one and type two, right here, and then each one is going to have three different pesticides. So up here in type one, it would go pesticide one, pesticide two, pesticide three, and down here in um, the soil type two, it would get pesticide one, pesticide two, pesticide three, and then we'd see uh, how much uh, how much of their did their how much did they yield on their soybeans? That would be the result. Okay. So it would be blocks on that again, okay? And keyword is blocks right there. Okay, studying welfare systems. Uh, so see uh, example 519 on page 303. 
A social policy experiment will assess the, the effect of family income of several proposed new welfare systems and compare them with the present welfare system. Because uh, the incomes of families under any welfare system is strongly related to its present income, the families who agree to participate are then divided into blocks, and the blocks are of similar income levels. So the families uh, and each block are then allocated at random among the welfare systems. Okay, so that one is going to be blocks also. Okay, all right. So blocks allow us to separate conclusions about each block. For example, about the men and women in the cancer study. Blocking also allows us uh, allows more precise overall conclusions because the systematic differences between men and women can be removed uh, when we study the overall effects of the three therapies. Okay, because the, the men get uh, different um, uh, reactions than the women do. So if we can just separate them up into men and women, uh, then we don't have to worry about you know whether they were men or women. We can just uh, do the three treatments on the men and the three treatments on the women. All right, uh, let's do another response to advertising. Okay, and this is example 514 on page 300. A study compares two television advertisements by showing TV programs to student subjects. The students know it's just an experiment. Well, we can't be sure that the result applies to everyday television uh, users because these kids know they're being experimented on. Many behavioral scientists, uh, science experiments use uh, as subjects students who know they're uh, subjects to an experiment. Well, that's not a realistic setting, you guys, because it doesn't represent everyday television viewers. So um, it's like the call-in po uh, polls. That's not a realistic uh, uh, poll either. Okay, so center brake lights, so this is uh, example 514 on page 300. Notice I'm going backwards a little bit. Uh, do those high center uh, brake lights required on all cars sold in the United States since 1986 really reduce rear end collision, uh, uh, collisions? Randomized comparative uh, experiments within fleets of rentals and business cars done before the lights were required showed that their brake lights reduced rear end collisions by as much as 50%. Wow! But alas, re uh, requiring the third light in all cars led to only a 5% drop. Well, they didn't think ahead, so this is what happened, you guys. Most cars did not have those extra brake lights when the experiments were carried out, so it caught people off guard, and it surprised them, and shocked them, and, so, and it made them break it. But now everybody's used to having these brake lights in there, uh, and it doesn't catch them off guard. So, I mean, it drops at 5%. That's better than nothing, but uh, everybody's used to it by now, so... Uh, that one's kind of a not not a realistic setting right there, and they just didn't think ahead about that. Okay, finally, uh, not finally, I think I have one more. Uh, cereal leaf beetles, or maybe this is it. Uh, and this is example 516 on page 301. Okay, um, are cereal leaf beetles more strongly attracted by the color yellow or by the color green? Agricultural researchers... Uh, want to know because they detect the presence of pests in farm fields by mounting sticky boards to traps insect, uh, to trap insects that land on them. The board color should attract beetles as strongly as possible. They want to know which ones attract them so they can uh, uh, trap them. Uh, we must design an experiment to compare yellow and green by mounting boards on poles in large fields. Okay, so the experimental uh, units are locations within the fields far enough apart uh, to represent independent observations. And so we, uh, we erect poles at each location to hold the boards. We might employ a completely randomized design in which we randomly uh, select half the poles to receive a yellow board while the remaining poles receive the green boards. Okay, the locations vary widely in the number of beetles present. So for example, the alfalfa that borders the oats on one side is a natural host of the beetles. So that location near the alfalfa will have extra beetles. Uh, this variation of <coughs> excuse me, experiments, experimental units can hide the systematic effect of the boards. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, so it's more effective. Uh, uh, to use a matched pair design in which we mount boards on both colors on each pole. So that way, when it's in a certain area, you guys, uh, it's got the, the yellow and the green on the pole. And so the observations are the number of beetles trapped. So, you know, if you put a pole there, you can have a red one and a, or not a red one, a yellow one and a green one there. So, uh, and then they, uh, so they, they, they match in pairs from the same poles, red and, or, I don't know, I'm stuck on red. 
yellow, and green. So we compare the number of trapped beetles on the yellow board and the number of trapped beetles on the green board on the same pole. That's why it's a matched pair, because you've got a pair of colors on the pole. So because the boards are mounted one above the other, we select the color of the top board at random. And so if you know you want to make sure you have half as many you know of them with the yellow boards on top and the other half with the green boards on on top, okay, to take turns on that. All right, so let's go back through those notes real quick. Uh, section B was a block design, and section C was also a block design. Uh, section D, well, there it is underlined, block. Section E, it's not realistic, so it's lack of realism, our book calls it. And then section F, this one also was a lack of realism because they just didn't realize what, uh, you know, that it was just a shock at the beginning, but everybody got used to them. And then the cereal leaf beetles, well, there it is down, down here. It's matched pair design right there, okay, because you're doing them in pairs. Okay, and that's it. I'll see you later.